everybody. My lovely, lovely, lovely imps. The Steven Crowder saga continues. You've probably seen a lot of videos from my channel recently about Steven Crowder. Uh, in fact, if you are not up to date on the Steven Crowder story, I would recommend going to my channel and searching Demon Mama Steven Crowder right now so that you can catch up on what's happened so far. I am going to be covering this consistently because, in my opinion, Steven Crowder is one of the most uh, heinous and toxic individuals currently active on YouTube, and he's very active on YouTube. Steven Crowder has uh, 5.8 million subscribers on YouTube, and his community is unbelievably toxic because they are following after his behavior, which is heinously toxic. Now, fortunately, for every single good person on the planet, Steven Crowder has fallen upon some very serious and self made misfortune. You see, Steven Crowder is now uh, uh, sort of publicly, uh, uh, it's been publicly revealed that Steven Crowder is having a massive and very messy divorce. And shortly after he decided to make a statement about his divorce, uh, in which he basically tried to make the claim that his wife was just being unwifely and didn't want to be with him anymore, uh, unlike a good Christian who wouldn't. And he also, by the way, in that video reiterated four times that he thinks it should be illegal to divorce your husband unless they cheat on you or beat you. It was, of course, shortly afterwards revealed that Steven Crowder has engaged in some pretty disgusting and inexcusable uh, uh, emotional, uh, marital abuse, and perhaps more. And this includes things like screaming, I will fuck you up, uh, at his, uh, pregnant wife, um, uh, telling her that she is not a worthy wife of him because she won't do the chores that he wants her to do in that moment. Um, he, he was smoking a cigar, uh, around his wife when she was, uh, eight months pregnant with twins and a whole bunch of other stuff. And today, another, uh, uh, another uh, very, very strange set of behaviors was revealed. Uh, this time, however, not from his wife, not from his family members, but from his former employees. Yes, that's right. Steven Crowder's former employees have come forward to allege sexual assault. So things are going very poorly for Steven Crowder right now, and like I said, because of his own behaviors. Sexual assault, yes. We're gonna jump into the whole story uh, right now. Now, I want to point something out before we get into the actual story. The source of this story is the conservative magazine, The New York Post. So keep in mind, this is not some liberal, a uh, uh, magazine that is going after Steven Crowder. It is the one of the magazines that Steven Crowder himself cites most frequently on his show. If you go through the history of Steven Crowder's show, the New York Post is one of his favorite newspapers. So regardless, we all here on the left know that the New York Post is a conservative rag, but by Steven Crowder's own standards, this is one of his favorite magazines. This is a magazine that he has given countless airtime to. So it's really saying something that his one of his most favorite conservative publications, which he regularly cites in his bigoted rants, has actually decided to reveal this information about him. It also seems to say that the allegations are credible enough that basically conservatives are going to have to start distancing themselves from Steven Crowder. Some already have. The Daily Wire, for example, who uh, includes people like Ben Shapiro, Candace Owens, and Matt Walsh, um, have distanced themselves from Steven Crowder and have actually gone very hard on Steven Crowder because they had a public dispute. But yes, they have been going very hard on him. Other sources, such as Tim Pool, etc., have not. Uh, anyway, let's jump into the story, shall we? Let's read this. Uh, let's read this together. Steven Crowder's wife rant video reveals a pathetic pattern of abuse 
X staff. So according to the X staff. Now this is the video that we reacted to the other day uh, of him threatening. Um, he is now threatening, or actually not even threatening, he has promised to make his wife's mental health history public because well, because he's looking bad in the public eye, which is very weird because you see his ex-wife um, didn't actually do anything publicly against him. Uh, recently, the embarrassing video of him berating his wife was released not by his ex-wife, but by his ex-wife's family, who, how they got the video it's, is unsure. Maybe they were given it by uh, his ex-wife at one point, but they were the ones who released it, not his wife, as far as we can tell. Regardless, Steven Crowder released a video in which he threatened to release his wife's private me uh, medical history uh, to the public. So just so you understand exactly who we're dealing with right here. A bombshell ring video was leaked last week, that's the one we were just talking about, of influential conservative commentator Steven Crowder berating his wife, Hillary Crowder. In the footage from June 2021, he tells her to fucking watch it and accuses her of refusing to do wifely things while telling her that he doesn't actually love her. At the time, she was eight, month pre eight months pregnant with their twins. Her family released a statement saying she had been hiding his mentally and emotionally abusive behavior from her friends and family. The pair, who married back in 2012, have been locked in a contentious divorce since at least, well, since 2021. Crowder claimed the disturbing footage, which was released on journalist Yashar Ali's substack, was misleadingly edited. But numerous former employees of the provocateur alleged these types of unhinged tirades were actually commonplace inside the Louder with Crowder office. So former employees are not only, as we're going to see, alleging sexual assault, but they're actually saying that he would yell at his employees in similar ways to the way that he would yell at his wife. Which makes me, once again, further, and this is speculation, but speculation that I believe is informed by his behavior, that makes me wonder what else is out there. What other things is on video of him doing uh, uh, of, of him doing to his wife or even his employees. If you're willing to even take your abusive behaviors into the workplace and berate people that you're paying money who are doing work for you, it really raises a lot of questions to just how far he's willing to go with his abusive behavior. Let's continue. Also, by the way, small, small, just a, a little bit of an arrogant moment from Demon Mama, me, uh, you guys will know that I've covered Steven Crowder's crap for years. Uh, we've had to react to, uh, react and respond to and debunk all the horrible stuff that he said. And I've always said that the people who are in the office with him behave as though they are in a hostage situation. They forcibly laugh every time he makes a joke, no matter how much he bungles the line. We have actually watched live on my show him fuck up a joke only to have his his crew just go ah, like that so uh turns out maybe mama's got a little bit of an eye for this stuff huh maybe mama's got a little bit of an eye if you want to be witness to the oracular mind the third eye of demon mama make sure you press like and subscribe right now because you don't want to miss a bit of demon mama's coverage Let's get back to the story. I'm not shocked, but it was pathetic to see what he did to Hillary, a former employee told the New York Post. That might not be the Steven you see on the show, but that was the real Steven. The Post spoke to 10 former employees who claimed that Crowder ran an abusive company. 10 employees brought allegations against Crowder, where he often screamed at his employees, including his own father, exposed his genitals, sent out directives to arbitrarily fire people, and made his underlings wash his dirty laundry. <laughs> I 
I mean, the, obviously the worst one here is exposing your genitals to employees, but also made underlings wash his dirty laundry? What the... What the absolute fuck? That's just so... <laughs> it's so pathetic, and it's also, like... This guy has a 5.4 million viewer channel or subscriber YouTube channel. This guy has a massive membership platform that is insanely expensive. This guy is rolling in money and he's yelling at his employees to wash his laundry. A literal man child. Actual, literal man child. Also, it is very weird that he yelled at his own father. Do you think he showed his genitals to his own father? That seems fucking weird. Let's continue. The former staffers worked for the show at different times from its inception in 2016 through 2022. So these aren't all recent people. These are people who have been working for the show all the way from the beginning, all the way to the present. The vast majority were people who had left the company voluntarily. So these were not people who got fired for the most part. Uh, that that's like now we they're not giving us a hard number, but uh, per, per, you know presuming they're not outright lying, that means more than half of the people who came forward to the New York Post were people who left on their own volition because of how bad the conditions were, who were not fired. They requested anonymity because they either feared retaliation or had previously signed NDAs. Now. Um, NDAs are incredibly common at conservative news outlets. Uh, in fact, there was a recent expose uh, done on the Daily Wire uh, that uh, they make their p potential hires uh, sign NDAs almost immediately so that information doesn't leak out uh, during the hiring process. NDAs are used aggressively at conservative news outlets. So th that is no surprise that they had been forced to sign NDAs. All they, they, all they said was that they felt compelled to speak out about the media personality after sickening footage was made public and his former co-host Dave Landau had called him a bully in an interview last week. That's a co-host, okay? So this is somebody who helped him run the entire show. We don't want Steven to suffer. We just want the abuse to stop or at least to let future employees know what they're getting themselves into, said one former employee. The Post reached out to Crowder via his lawyer, as well as via Louder with Crowder CEO Gerald Morgan. Uh, Gerald Morgan, multiple times about the allegations brought forth by former employees, but did not receive a response. The 35-year-old American-Canadian right-wing content creator who bills himself as a devout Christian was a child actor who started doing stand-up at 17. In 2009, he became a Fox News contributor, writing essays in defense of abstinence. And then in 2014, he started doing a weekly podcast broadcast by a conservative radio station in Michigan and gained a larger following. Here's a picture of him when he got married to his wife, his ex-wife. In November 2016, Crowder moved to Texas, hired a small team, and turned Louder with Crowder into a full production arm, creating comedic sketches, a podcast, and his popular Change My Mind videos. We all know those. You know, it's him with the coffee, and he's got the little sign that says, Change My Mind, and then he cuts out all of the conversations that don't go favorably to him, and only does the ones with awkward college students who weren't prepared to get into an argument. You know that one. Crowder, who has 1.3 million Instagram followers, followers and 5.9 million subscribers on YouTube, became wildly influential among conservatives who were dazzled by his brash contrarian takes, irreverent approach, and crusades against big tech. People thought he was funny, and he could be, especially if you were watching from the outside, said an early staffer. But inside the Dallas-based Crowder universe, many said he was like a yo-yo. Charismatic and kind at times, a volatile Crowder could also be controlling and capable of working every angle of your emotions. 
which we saw in that video, right? We saw him try basically everything in the book from berating her to uh, begging her to saying that she was abusing him by locking him in the house because he said she couldn't take the car uh, to him saying she wasn't a worthy wife. She, he used religion, politics, uh, her personal emotions. With, with long hours and unrealist, unrealistic expectations and emotional outbursts, he often burned through his staffers, many of whom were young, starry-eyed fans who had never worked in traditional media and had relocated to Texas just for the opportunity to work with their hero. Can you imagine being like 18, like an 18 year old conservative, like like never even been in the world outside of like the world that you grew up in, your parents like keeping you in church and, and in all this, and you're like, oh, I'm gonna go work with Crowder. And you get there and he, f and he fucking flashes his junk at you and then makes you wash his dirty laundry after you literally uproot your life to move to Texas, deranged. While the Louder with Crowder ethos was politically incorrect, his antics crossed the line. He was known to expose his genitals to staffer staffers. Many ex-employees told the Post. More than one employee alleged having been sexually assaulted by Steven Crowder. Six sources, six sources said that they witnessed him flashing his genitals to staffers firsthand. Six. That is deranged. That is off the chart. Super Christian though, right? A former staffer recalled driving back from Illinois in a van after a college show when former producer Jared Monroe, whom Crowder dubbed Not Gay Jared, was targeted. Jared was asleep in the last row of the car. Stephen was up front and he was joking about what he was going to do, the staffer recalled. He climbed over and dropped his junk on top of Jared's shoulder. Let, let's hear that again, I'm sorry. Jared was asleep in the last row of the van. Stephen was in front and he was joking about what he was about what he was going to do the staffer recalled he climbed over and dropped his junk on top of Jared's shoulder this same person also claimed that Crowder exposed himself to Jared in 2017 while they were in the green room filming a parody of Ghost when asked about both allegations Monroe simply told the post no comment so Monroe is definitely scared of getting sued By the way, no comment is what you say. Uh, no comment is what you say when you when it absolutely happened, but you don't want to get sued. Otherwise, you would just say no. It's literally that simple. During a 2018 flight with six people from the company, another former employee said they witnessed Crowder put his testicles on his assistant and childhood friend, John Goodman, who shook off the incident. Goodman, who still works for Crowder, did not return a request for comment. A fourth ex-employee said that Crowder exposed himself to former co-host Landau, Landau is the one who quit, at the conference table with others present. Landau did not respond to the post request for a comment. It was childish, but then I found out this was something he did. At first I took it as him trying to be friendly or one of the guys. Okay, hold on a second. Everybody, putting your genitals on somebody else without consent is sexual assault, okay? It is not friendly. It is not one of the guys, okay? That is sexual assault. That is just the fact that this staffer is even saying, using the like one of the, bo uh, just, you know, just boys being boys type argument just goes to show you how normalized this type of misbehavior is, is in conservative spaces. The idea that, that, it is that, 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 that you could see anybody put their genitals on somebody else against their consent and just go, oh, boys being boys. That it took multiple incidents for people to go, okay, this is crossing the line. That is so bad. Oh my God, that's terrible. 
If your manager at Red Lobster did this, it would be national news. Yeah. Yeah, it's sexual assault. Numerous sources noted these incidents were not a part of sketches, many of which could be body and off color. But Crowder, sources said, is often known for blurring the lines of professionalism. Numerous former employees said his production assistants would wash laundry in the office, including Crowder's dirty personal items. He lit. Oh, God. He was not. He wasn't just making them watch shirts and pants. He was making them watch his fucking shit stained underpants. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Oh, my God. Oh, oh my God. It was like a cult where you were all in, uh, 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 said one ex-employee, adding that Crowder did not want you to have a life outside of it. That is a cult, by the way. That is a personality cult right there. Crowder doesn't want you to have a life outside of the job. That is insane. In 2017, he commissioned his small team to create a Christmas Carol parody on top of their regular workload. A few ex-employees, none of whom were paid overtime, said that they logged over 100 hours in the week leading up to the release of the Christmas Carol special and even slept in the office. literal nightmare i cannot even believe like we anybody who's watched louder with crowder and seen the way his employees react to him how how terrified they are to be around him how they act like they're in a hostage situation at all times we could see it it shows it shows through every minute this is insane in the midst of this project, Crowder sent sent a group text message telling them to sleep in and come into the office one uh, a bit later one day. Uh, one employee remarked, "Sleep, lol." Crowder shot back, "Be a little grateful, buddy." The exchange seen by the post, so they've actually seen this text angered the team, who turned into an oft-repeated joke when they felt undervalued and overworked. When shows or projects fell short of his expectations, Crowder piled the blame on his staffers. We would tell him things wouldn't work, said one ex-staffer, who recalls a massive live show in 2018 not going exactly as Crowder had planned. I thought, surely Steven, who micromanaged the whole thing, is going to take some responsibility here, they, they, they continued. Instead, Crowder put the onus on his staff. His assistant handed each copy, uh, each employee a copy of Jocko Willink's leadership and performance book called Extreme Ownership, How U.S. Navy Seals Lead and Win. Dude, holy shit. Oh my, that is so passive aggressive. It's unbelievable. So you're you're getting underpaid working for a guy who's raking in millions of dollars. A guy who sits on a... T tens of thousands of dollars in cigars alone. A guy who's just so loaded you can't even believe it. A guy loaded enough to turn down a $50 million contract from Daily Wire. That's right, he said no to $50 million. And, he, and when something goes wrong, he blames it on the staff and then hands them a book about how it's their fault. Holy, oh my God. We all thought we were gonna get an apology, but instead we got a book. It was literally like a sitcom, the former staff, or it was like a sitcom, the former staffer cracked. Back in late 2020, while on a tear, Crowder sent out a directive to arbitrarily fire someone, don't care who, read the Discord message viewed by the Post. So the Post got this one as well. The source said that Crowder often dropped threats to fire people into the company's Discord chat room. His irrational outbursts even extended to his father, Darren, who works as his booker. Numerous, wait, that's conf confirmation. Wait a minute, hold on a second, that's confirmation. You remember when Sam Cedar made the joke that Steven Crowder's dad wouldn't let him argue, uh, argue against Sam Cedar? 
That's confirmation. Steven Crowder said his booker wouldn't let him uh, uh, debate St Sam Cedar, and now we have confirmation from the New York Post that yes, his daddy wouldn't let him debate Sam Cedar. We actually have confirmation now. Sirius says, Sirius, as much as I hate Crowder and I and how much like him this sounds, how reliable of a report is this really? Everyone in this space is a snake who's willing to lie and ex-employees have reason to do so if they're bitter. Moreover, New York Post is a rag that basically never accurately reports shit. I would wait for a more reliable source on this. You could be correct that the New York Post is a conservative rag and we and the the New York Post uh, is not always particularly accurate. However, Stephen Crowder is the one who cites the New York Post for all of his stuff. So when it comes to Stephen Crowder, uh, the New York Post is actually incentivized to agree with Crowder since he hawks their magazine for free all the time. Now it is indeed possible that they're lying about this, but they would be they would be going to a a next level of dishonesty uh they have now according to them 10 ex staffers the majority of which were not fired they left on their own volition uh so uh while i understand um while i understand concerns about the veracity of the new york post we're talking about conservatives here uh, New York, uh, Steven Crowder lies all the time, and I'm much more inclined, like to a to a, a systemic degree. Steven Crowder will literally lie about what his sources say in his videos. I think that us going to the source as best as possible is about the best that we're going to get when it comes to Steven Crowder. And once again, this is Steven Crowder's. I don't know if it's his number one most cited source, but it's very close. It is one of his most cited sources is New York Post. The New York Post, he it's in almost every single one of his political videos. They will have at least one citation from the New York Post. So if it's it, as as Killjoy says, if it's good enough for Crowder to use to to launch bigotry to the rest of the world, I think it's good enough for us to use as a judge of Crowder's character. So there's the statement. Darren, who still works with his son, did not respond to the post's uh, request for comment. He did it regularly, and it was usually about failing to book someone he wanted on the show. Steven would say, I'm supposed to get stars, recalled one ex-staffer who said he was approached by two other underlings who said that Crowder's behavior towards his father made them feel uncomfortable. Last week, so they're talking about him yelling at his dad, like freaking out his, at his dad in the office regularly. Last week, Crowder's ex-co-host Landau called his former boss a bully on the episode of the podcast, You're Welcome with Michael Malice. Whatever he has and whatever he's going through, I think he was bullied at some point in his life, Landau said. He's become the bully and he doesn't even realize it. Landau detailed how Crowder installed a Dave don't talk button in the studio and always had to get the last word in. Yeah, this is the this is this has been uh, corroborated by other sources, by the way. The fact that Crowder installed a button that would shut up his co-host if he uh, if he felt like his co-host was outshining him, he would just press a button and it would shut off his co-host. Sirius says, that's a fair response. I would say that anything that the NYP actually saw is probably too much to lie about even for them, but I'm a bit skeptical. It's fair to be skeptical, but they got, they had 10 people come forward and they were given direct evidence. So I, I feel like that goes far even for the New York Post. The New York Post is a rag. They are very manipulative in the things that they say. They usually post manipulative headlines and they word things in very sneaky ways. They usually usually will not directly lie about the sources that they've received they will simply manipulate the wording around it to make it seem more important or more impactful than it is uh and part of the reason for this is because as a, a publisher they are still held to some level of journalistic standards which means they can be sued um so yeah let's continue let's continue 
Perhaps the most bizarre incident came after Crowder, who was scheduled to miss a show, signed off on comedian Matt McClowry to fill in with Landau. When Crowder's assistant later said no to McClowry's appearance and Landau asked Crowder about it, the conservative personality unleashed on his co-host. He told me he owns me. It was venomous. I saw a different person that I had only heard rumors about, Landau, Landau told Malice. So this is his former co-host being, according in his own co-host words, this is directly from the mouth of the co-host, he was told by Steven Crowder, I own you. Even before his recent divorce drama, Crowder had raised eyebrows by going after fellow conservative media titans. In January, Crowder, whose contract with The Blaze was up, launched the Stop Big Con initiative, in which he accused another conservative outlet, later revealed to be Ben Shapiro's The Daily Wire, of offering him a $50 million slave contract. There you go. They're talking about the $50 million offer. Steven Crowder is rich enough, loaded enough, and making enough money off of his YouTube show um, to turn down a $50 million contract. Insane. In March, he signed onto a pre onto free speech platform Rumble, and in an interview with Megyn Kelly, he said his crusade was not about me, it's about the next creator. We all laughed when he said stuff like that. Uh, if you were funny or talented, he would squash you, said one of the sources. Which, of course, we've seen plenty of evidence of that. One former employee said they weren't doing the sketches they wanted to do, so they teamed up with Landau to create a sketch comedy pilot that was released last December. Steven freaked out and threatened to fire people over. It was viewed as a mutiny. So, a couple of employees decided to do their own thing separate from the show, and he freaked out and threatened to fire them. Another source noted that it was made on their own time, with their own equipment, and did not use any company resources. Right? Again, so independent. Dave was told, this is your fault. We have to fire them now. Eventually, the original source said Crowder backed down. In April, Landau announced that he left the company and was going to the blaze. So Landau was not fired. The co-host left on his own volition. That doesn't seem like someone who's trying to build up content creators, said one of the sources. Many blame this public unraveling on his habit of purging anyone who challenges him. These terrible ideas and moves have always been in his nature, but over time he has surrounded himself with only yes men and his family who literally work for him. Or, sorry, his family who works for him. They, didn't, they don't tell him otherwise, said an ex-staffer, adding, there is no one there to hold him to account. Things are not looking good for Steven Crowder. And uh, honestly, uh, I personally feel very vindicated about the amount of times that I've stated that not in addition to being a disgusting bigot, that the work environment uh, at Steven Crowder's show appears to be incredibly toxic. Um, this guy is making so much money and we now have multiple testimonies. Uh, keep in mind that this is just from the New York Post. We have already covered on this show, independently, people who've come forward saying that the work environment uh, there was bad. We've just never had people go this open. Um, Steven Crowder seems to have created basically a personality cult that involves uh, uh, repeated and systematic abuse of his workers. Uh, and also, as far as we can tell, repeated and systematic abuse of his own family. It's actually wild to me that YouTube has allowed Steven Crowder to fester on their platform for this long. Um, Steven Crowder is running a show that is, that is inevitably going to hurt the reputation of YouTube. Uh, not just because of his disgusting bigotry. Obviously, uh, the bigotry is one thing because it's obviously making YouTube some money. Uh, even though his show has been uh, warned, warned by YouTube multiple times, he's had multiple episodes of his show taken down. Steven Crowder has for some reason not had his channel removed. Almost as though he's receiving special treatment from YouTube. He is. Steven Crowder has been receiving special treatment from YouTube. Other smaller channels that engage in violations of the community TOS like his, 
other smaller channels that make YouTube toxic have been uh, have been completely obliterated for way, way less than what Steven Crowder does. Steven Crowder has a massive platform. He's one of the most toxic creators on the entire platform. And in addition, the entire time, he's doing it on the back of raw abuse, literal sexual assault, and so much more. It's actually unbelievable. Why is he getting special treatment from YouTube? Well, because he's he's got 5.9 million subscribers and he's making them a lot of money. His videos get ads on them. He pays for advertising. He pays YouTube a lot of money to have his videos be recommended in ads. You've seen Louder with Crowder ads almost guaranteed if you watch other videos on YouTube, you'll be served his crappy ads. So of course he makes them a ton of money which is why they've been willing to look the other way, even though he's in blatant violation of the TOS. But maybe, but maybe they can't look the, the other way anymore. Maybe having a guy who is running a personality cult on YouTube, making most of his money via his platform on YouTube, running a, a, a shop where he is ritualistically abusing humiliating and sexually assaulting his employees, maybe that will finally be the line that's too far for YouTube and YouTube will finally have to take action on his heinous and disgusting program. Regardless, it's going to be very interesting to see how conservative spaces uh, handle um, this revelation because this is pretty serious. Um, uh, it's pretty. It's getting pretty hard to avoid the fact that that uh, Steven Crowder is looking bad even among conservatives. Most of your uh, rank and file daily conservatives, even though they profess beliefs that are not out of line with the behaviors that Steven Crowder is engaging in. Um, keep in mind, let's recall that conservatives push for more power for bosses, more power and less accountability for rich people. They push for a world in which men uh, have less responsibility to treat women good. They push for a world in which women are supposed to be submissive. They fight against uh, allegations of abuse constantly. Even though conservatives push for that, the everyday conservative actually does find this type of behavior um, distasteful. They just tend to believe that this is a bad apple, that Steven Crowder is a bad apple, and that it has nothing to do with the type of power structures that are built up on the right. It's going to be very interesting to see whether or not uh, 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 Steven Crowder is going to be fully rejected by the right or whether people are going to circle around him. What we do know is that his own platform is very large and if he decides to as he has announced that he is going to um in his video he said he's going to be releasing his wife's pr uh, private information next week so i think that's in a couple of days um it was it was that video came out over the weekend so probably sometime in the next couple of days uh we will see if he decides to go forward with that if he does that he will be directly weaponizing his youtube channel to damage his wife. You know what we could do? We could go look at the comments on his videos. Should we just take a quick look? Maybe as a little, um, maybe as a little, uh, a little final experiment here, we can go take a look at his, uh, at his comments. Let's see what the comments on his own videos are saying. I think that would be a, a interesting way to, uh, to take, to, to continue with this. Um, let's take a look. Where do we go here? The live videos. Plot thickens. Tucker Carlson. No, no, no. It's the first one was Tucker Carlson's firing. Hey. Let, this is the original. Let's look at the comments on the original video. Here we go. Children need a dad that respects their mother. Steven is the type of guy with real family values, like making his pregnant wife take an Uber to the store and exclaiming, I will F you up as she tries to walk away from his verbal abuse. A real man's man. These are the top, let's see, can we sort by the top comments? Yeah, these are the top comments. These are, these are not just, I'm not sorting by newest, I'm sorting by top. Let's, let's see if we can get this a little bit bigger so people can see. Here we go, let's make sure everybody can see it on the screen.
and the law allows that. Yeah, Stephen, that's how freedom works, from taxation is theft. Hopefully Hillary finds a man with compassion and patience to help her actually to help her raise her children. Anyone else think it's no coincidence that he decided to go public with this right after Dave exposed what happened between them? Dave, this is the co-host. Dave is the co-host. Dave did predict one of Steven's most likely courses of actions would be to try and make a martyr out of himself. To the surprise of absolutely no one, Steven Crowder's wife left him because he treated her like shit. What a shock. Holy shit. These are the, the again, just so we're clear, I'm sorting by top comments, not newest. The highest voted comments on his videos right now are completely turning against him. I'm not sure Candace crossed a line saying Steven is going through a lot and we need to pray for him. There's a Candace supporter. Clever of Steven to say there was no physical abuse because he would be lying if he said there was no emotional abuse. I think the only thing that will hurt your children is hearing you say my biggest failure is that I picked wrong, meaning it was a mistake falling in love with their mother. Damn. That's an old comment, too. That was from the day of. We're now in the area, by the way. These are comments from... This was launched... This video launched seven days ago, so we're getting into the, into the range of comments that were happening shortly after it launched. Odd that he would think someone would go after his kids. Candace, pray for Steven because he's going through some personal issues. Steven, look at that. She clearly threatened my children. The fact that Dave recently publicly slammed him says a lot. Yeah, you guys have to remember, uh, Dave was uh, on the show forever. Dave is the guy that you always see that he cuts back and forth to. This th Dave leaving the show is actually a pretty major indictment. He's been, he was like, that guy was in for a penny, in for a pound. And he left. Let's keep going. Let's see if we can find a single supportive com comment. Why does Steven act like people are going to attack his children as a result of him getting divorced? That makes no sense. That makes literally zero sense. It's kind of funny how much he emphasizes caring about his kids' well-being in this video. Did you care about them when you berated your eight-month pregnant wife for refusing to handle medication that was potentially toxic to pregnant women? Did you care about them when you smoked a cigar right in front of her? Did you care about them when you caused her so much stress and anxiety? I'm glad she got away from you. Abusers who paint themselves as victims deserve no pity. I'd bet a lot of money that he thought his show and his movement is more important than his marriage. Watch Candace Owens, a Steven, Cr Steven Crowder is a monster. Looks like his wife is the one who chose wrong. Oh, wow, this is a big one. Let's look at, let's, all right, let's, let's read the essay. Let's read the essay. Okay, this has... This only has, this has 40 upvotes, but we've, we, we haven't seen, in the top comments, we haven't seen a single positive comment. Okay? Not a single one. I rarely comment on social media, but after hearing about his divorce, watching the viral video of him and his ex-wife, and seeing his actions, I was shocked and disgusted by it all. In this video, he says that divorce in Texas is permitted, and said it was such contempt, and made it sound as if he was in another state than she'd have to stay in their marriage and continue to suffer his abuse. What the hell? That's not how it works, and it's 2023 now. I feel so badly for his ex-wife after watching the viral video of him belittling, gaslighting, and screaming at her, and then telling her he didn't love her and was going to fuck her up when she was carrying his twins and was almost full term. He even had the nerve to tell her that she wasn't performing her wifely duties and implied that she wasn't giving him sex. Who would want to be around that kind of a person, much less have to touch them and have to do what he calls wifely duties with a heartless prick like that? In the video that went viral, she repeatedly told him that she loved him and just wanted to take the car to get a few groceries, and he wouldn't let her because she hadn't sexually pleased him and performed her duties. How sick is that? And he also said he might need the car to himself so he could go to the gym or see his friends and wouldn't be stuck at home. I was so proud of her for leaving right after he said that, and I, I hope that her and the twins are doing really well and are getting therapy for the abuse they suffered and are getting their lives back now. It made my stomach churn to hear how Steven Crowder talked to her in the privacy of their home. I was appalled and disgusted by his actions. I've been a long-time listener. Holy shit, this is a, this is a long-time fan. I have no desire to ever see anything that he does or is a part of ever again.
What a sad, pathetic, empty, abusive, egotistical, fake, and sickening person who has had us all fooled for way too long. Even his response to all of this made me feel sick to his stomach and I honestly feel that he made it way worse. I've suffered from abuse myself in the past and it's something that will haunt his ex-wife for a long time, if not forever. And even though she's left him now, it's so hard to build yourself back up again and to try and overcome it. Shame on you, Steven Crowder, and shame on all of us for being fooled by you for way too long. I haven't watched him in months, not for any real reason, I just haven't. Watching the intro to this and the way he said the law in his state was disturbing. Like the other option was having the state force her to stay with him? I've never lost respect for someone so quickly. Guess he wants more government involvement or something. Oh no! He's losing the small government conservatives! Oh no! <laughs> What a terrible way to treat the mother of your child. It's awesome she left. She'll be much happier now. It's your fault, not because you can't you can take actual accountability, but because you picked wrong. Got it. This guy is such a martyr. Thank God we have Steven Crowder to point out he picked wrong. What a man. Unbelievable that he could show such courage to come out on his platform and throw his family under the bus. It's really weird that you think she shouldn't legally be allowed to divorce you. Here's someone. Lord, please let Steven see what's going on. Please open his eyes and help him. Here's a Christian praying for him in the comments. No one should be surprised by the ring footage. Steven Crowder has told all of you from day one exactly what kind of a person he is. We haven't seen a single supportive comment so far. In all, this is, we're getting down into the smaller comments. There is not a single comment in support of him. Let's go to the newest comments. Let's take a look at the newest comments and then we'll go look at one of the other videos. Not gonna lie, this is unfortunate and a little disappointing. I had really high hopes for his family and his kids because I remember he mentioned once how hard it was for them to finally have kids. I believe Miss Crowder had multiple miscarriages. Based on the values Steven Crowder himself preaches with regards to raising kids and family, and add to that, I generally like his sense of humor. It seemed like he would be a good father to his kids. I was really looking forward to seeing his family grow and them staying together. Maybe one day seeing how his kids turn out and him talking about them, I will say I'm a bit disappointed with him in regards to the little that I saw of that clip in their article argument. Marriage is a lot and being married myself, arguments happen and mean hurtful things get said. The key is to calm down and work things out. But based on the little that I saw, I have to side with uh, Hillary on this. Maybe because I'm a woman myself and I wouldn't want my, I would want my husband to be more understanding if I was eight months pregnant. Maybe it's because I'm in med school, considering she had miscarriages previously, I understand her sense of caution. Maybe it's because I saw a little bit of my emo emotionally abusive father in Steven. I don't know, maybe it's all of the above. But I still have hope that Steven can grow and learn from this. This is the most supportive comment that we've seen, and it's still critical. This was from 18 minutes ago. This is the, the only mildly supportive comment, and it still says that he was being bad. No fault divorce was created for exactly cases like this. Steven needs help. This is very sad. Hillary needs to keep herself and the kids safe. A man who will be controlling and emotionally abusive to his wife will do the same to his kids. Steven needs therapy and humility to deal with his control and anger issues. Marriage requires both adults to grow up. Grow up, Steven! Damn, I'm new to this channel, but these comments is messy. Subscribed. That's the first right here, guys. We got it! We fucking got it! B -b 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 Bazinga! We got the first supportive comment. The first one. That's it. Wow, such support. Like a bot comment. Holy moly.
Where's my wife? Is she safe? Is she all right? It seems that in your anger, you divorced her. No, I felt it. She was in love. So good at housework. Uh, uh, no! <laughs> oh. Crowder, you are not right. I can't believe you, I watched and subscribed to you. You're, it's a man. I seen the video, not good for you. You make me glad I'm not married. I'm definitely unsubscribing, effective immediately, angry emoji. I hope you get everything coming to you. Christian, ha, it is to laugh. You're no longer fan, Leslie. Some, some definite uh, boomer grammar there. You've really disappointed me with your egotism in this video. I've been following you for many years and I know you're smart, so it's strange that you can't acknowledge your error and instead point fingers or imply that it's everyone else's fault, regardless of the undeniable evidence proving that the divorce was only your fault. I don't blame her for leaving you. Daily Wire missed a hell of a bullet, so disappointing. His, wi His wife is hot. Why he, why leave that, lol? Well. I guess that's not really supportive or otherwise. I guess we'll count, we can count this one as a supportive comment, okay? That's two. We've gone through two dozen comments so far. All of the top comments are anti Steven Crowder. Let's take a look at one other video. Let's look at his video where he announces, um, where he announces the, uh, the, 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 uh, what's the one? the video where he talks about his uh, wedding again. When, when was that one from? Let me double check real quick. The one where he announces the, the uh, sorry, not the, not the marriage is off. It's the, uh, it's the one where he says he's gonna release the private information. Sorry, my brain, my, my apologies. I had a brain fart there for a second. Let's see here. God, this guy posts so many clips. Here it is. This is the one. This is from his show. So this was from April 28th. Okay. So from the 28th, where is the one from the 28th? Four days ago. So that's this one or this one? Let's see. Oh boy, I almost didn't. Oh boy, here we go. We're at top comments. Okay, so this is the video. Here we go. This is the video right here. This is, this is, I don't even know if this is the one where he Make brings it, here it up. To era. Oh, wait, hold on. No, he's wearing a red shirt. So this, by the way, guys, guys, just so we know, hold on real quick, just so we're 100% clear. This is not, the, he does not talk about his, his, his divorce in this video. But I want us to see the comments anyway. Top comment, the top voted comment, 4.7 thousand. Steven Crowder would rather have his pregnant wife take an Uber than their own car. You don't actually love somebody if you don't put the gloves on. Change my mind. For those defending v Steven saying the video is out of context when Steven announced his divorce on his giant platform against his wife expressed wishes, he had a chance to own his mistakes. He could have admitted to having anger issues. He could have said he needed therapy. He could have said he talked to his wife in ways he regrets and that are unbecoming of a man of God. He could have said a million things, but what, did, what he did say was his big mistake, he picked wrong. No amount of context can speak more to his character than that. He threw his wife under the bus and made it sound like she was leaving him because she just doesn't want to be married and wants something different for her life. He knows that's not true. She doesn't want him to be married to him because of the way he treats her. And what does he do in response? He plays the victim. 1.5 thousand likes. Dude gives more respect to Tucker Carlson than his own wife. Steven Crowder's wife said he's controlling and emotionally and verbally abusing, saying I don't love you is arguably the worst thing you could ever say to your wife. Almost a thousand likes. Steven treated the dog better than he did his pre pregnant wife. Everybody thank the state of Texas for allowing Crowder's wife to finally have a good life away from him. 
Funny how he tried to unite the left and the right, and it kind of worked in a way. Now we all think he's despicable. I'm throwing out my Louder with Crowder mug. I've watched you for years, Steven. You have done so many people wrong. Holy shit! Look at the like-dislike video! I mean, like-dislike ratio on this video! 12k likes to 22,000 dislikes! Holy shit! The, and this is a video? He doesn't even talk about his divorce in this video. Wait, let's look at the one where he does talk about the divorce. Okay, so in the original video where he talks about the divorce, it has a positive like to dislike ratio. But ever since he's ever since the video came out, there the ratio is getting worse. Now, this is the day the video came out right here. D destroyed. The day the video came out, destroyed. Let's take a look at the next one. Equal 50-50 like dislike after the video came out. Today's video, almost 50-50. Ever since the video has launched, he's been at almost a 50-50 like-dislike or worse. This video, the one about Tucker Carlson, is a uh, like 70-30 split like-dislike. I mean, dislike-like. Holy, his, his channel is getting, his, his, oh my God. His audience, he might actually seriously damage his audience. So wait, does he have a, you said, people said that he published a short on his channel? Where's the one? Oh, I don't think he published it as a short. No, I don't think he did. Steven Crowder right now. Legit. Legit Steven Crowder right now. Oh my god. <laughs> oh Jesus. Hold on a second. Let's see if we can find. Did he do a video? No, he didn't. Where is his? Did he, did he post a video about... Where is, so he only posts that on you, on, he only posts this on Twitter. It looks like this video, this one, doesn't actually, huh. Yeah, let's check his, uh, let's check his, uh, social blade. So his channel is called st at Steven Crowder. Oh no. Oh no. Oh shit. Minus 10k, minus 10k, minus 10k, minus 10k, minus 10k, minus 10k. Oh Jesus. His weekly average for the last week has been minus 10,000 per day. Holy shit. It's actually, look, you can actually see he dropped under 5.9. He's now down to 5.88. Now, previous to that, he was gaining. Oh, shit. Look at this. Look at, look. Gaining. So, this is for the entirety of 2023. In January of 2023, 20, sorry, 10,000 gained January, uh, zero gained February, negative 10,000 last month, which is when this started, which is, no, that would have been, so he was already losing in March. What happened in March that started him losing that? Now he's lost 20,000 in the last month. Now, this, this chart is never up to date because obviously we can see the day by day that he's lost way more than that. Like, 
was it the Daily Wire drama? No, that was that was too wild. That was too far ago. So he was already starting to lose some. Maybe this chart just isn't as accurate because here's the daily. The daily was Monday. He lost ten thousand. Uh, then it was there were no stats reported for Tuesday and Wednesday. Thursday ten thousand. Friday ten thousand. Saturday ten thousand. Sunday no stats reported. Monday ten thousand. Oh, it could have been when the co-host left. Yeah, that could have been when the co-host left. Oh, his video views are declining really seriously too. Look at this. He he was at plus plus 1.8 million, 1 million, plus 1.2 million, plus 1.9 million, then down to 900,000, 700,000, 753,000. His daily average has dropped significantly. All right, we'll have to see where this goes. It's not all that it's not all that much to be able to predict because uh because these stats don't re report in real time and you never know exactly you never know exactly how accurate the the view counts are from these secondhand websites but still That's really hard to tell, Cadmus. I don't know. That's like alt history. I don't know how we would do that. <sighs> all I can say, look, at the end of the day, all we can say is that the comments are not happy with him. They are not happy with him at all. He also hasn't posted a video outside of a live video in three weeks. That is wild. Jeez. Oh, here's show segments. He has a thing of show segments. Oh, we can look at those. All right, this Why one was would... from five hours ago. Let's look at the comments. No, wait, what is this? Okay, this is totally different. This is like a, oh, this is a Crowder Bits. Okay, so his Crowder Bits channel. Wait, let's see what his Crowder Bits channel, if they've been insulated from it. Crowder Bits. Crowder Bits seems to be his, his clip channel. I wonder, oh my God. Wow, that's racism right away. Um, I want to see. I wonder if there's any comments on this. Let's take a look. Why are gays so flamboyant? Gay William answers. So this is the video he posted the same day. Lots of anti-trans stuff, but here's the video he posted the same day. Let's and see if there's any comments on this channel. Top comment, please don't make fun of special needs kids. Second highest comment, my sister is special needs. She had surgeries the first seven years of her life. She took a Barbie to every single one of them. How amazing it could have been to have this when she was going through those surgeries. Promoting this hurts no one. This is such a horrible take and it's crazy to me you wasted time to talk about it. So they're not, oh, Steven is showing his true colors again. Wish my fellow conservatives would wake up to what you're following and validating. I, I see nothing wrong with this. I used to be an avid watcher of Louder with Crowder. Now I just feel they oppose anything even minutely progressive. And, and I, do, I do consider myself somewhat progressive, but people with Down syndrome aren't doing anything wrong and deserve a bit of recognition and representation. I hope this wakes a few new people up to the kind of person Steven is. You guys are way off the mark here. Down syndrome people have been among the, amongst the happiest and friendliest people I've ever met. I have no problem with this doll. 
you got I have a son with Down syndrome and thought this was great for the female Down syndrome community. The short bus comment was horrible. You guys should be ashamed. My my Down syndrome son graduated from high school, went on to graduate from college, and has a great job. Wow. So yeah, actually it is bleeding over to his side channels. It looks like the the anger at him is bleeding over across all of his platforms. Wild. Well, everybody, this has been the wild update to the Steven Crowder situation. What did we learn today? Steven Crowder's fan base is very angry at him. Uh, Steven Crowder's uh, uh, support is bleeding among conservatives. Steven Crowder has now been accused by multiple people of sexual assault of employees. Uh, and also, uh, he told his co-host that he literally owns him. Wild. Uh, uh, things are not going well for Steven Crowder. Uh, however, as we know, Steven Crowder has threatened, in fact promised, that he plans to release personal private medical information about his wife later this week. So I have a feeling that we are likely to see even more uh, 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 unraveling of Steven Crowder in the future. Will it end his career? Who knows? That is yet to be seen. We know he is now losing subscribers for the first time in a very long time. Uh, as far as we can look back, he's been pretty much staying even or gaining subscribers for most of 2023 with a small bump when he lost his co-host, uh, which was very, very recent to this. So maybe his co-host knew what was coming and was heading out to greener pastures. Um, Crowder, of course, a terrible, terrible person. But you know who's not a terrible, terrible person? And you know whose channel is awesome? And will also tell you uh, with shocking entertainment value what's going on with horrible conservative ghouls? Demon Mama. So that's right, if you enjoyed this, make sure that you're subscribed right now. Go down, press subscribe and ring the bell. And of course, please tell me in the comments what you think about all this Steven Crowder stuff, because I really love to hear from my lovely, lovely imps. Thank you all for being here.